Maxine Audley in The Heroine by Antonia Fraser. In 1644, when England was ravaged by civil war, Charlotte, Countess of Derby, held Latham House for the King throughout a bitter siege by the forces of Parliament. The Earl of Derby was away fighting for Charles I, but his Countess was as valiant as any man, and her soldiers were ready to die for her. Life! What is life when liberty itself is at stake? I will never purchase peace with loss of honor. I will never yield Latham House, except on the orders of my lord, the Earl of Derby. Although I am but a weak and helpless woman, cut off from my husband, alone with my daughters, I am still ready to receive the utmost violence of these rebels. I trust to God for protection and deliverance, and to you, gentlemen, for your heroic strength. How say you then? For God and King Charles! How say the Earl of Derby and the King! God save our gallant soldiers! Well, Mistress Parker, the last cry was the loudest. The men worshipped their Countess Lady Girlington. They would give their lives for her. Just as well. They soon may be obliged to do so. There go the guns again. They still make me jump. A bare 300 soldiers against 3,000 round the walls. How long will it last, Mistress Parker? Our Countess will never give in. She's held Latham House for nearly three months now. She will hold forever if needs be. She is certainly obstinate enough. And in other ways, with her cunning talk, she's as downright tricky as this wretched monkey of hers. It costs 60 pounds to bring from France. Or so my sewing maid told me. They both have French blood. That's the trouble. France. What a sly country. I'm sure what the Countess spends on her pets is her own affair. The men are worn out, some of them. The food is getting monotonous, too. Soon we shall only be left with water from Marvin Well to sustain us. And that will never dry up. Personally, I have never understood why she refused to meet Sir Thomas Fairfax and treat with him. He is a gentleman. We could have been free and sleeping in our beds two months back if the Countess had not been so, well, pig-headed. Oh, the fact is that she's really enjoying herself I've never seen her so happy, not in all the years since they've come to Latham Hall. Her cheeks are so pink, her eyes sparkle, her head is held high, and she laughs. Yes, laughs all the time. She, who was always so meek and obedient to her husband, sometimes I think she positively revels in his absence. Lady Girlington, good morning. Oh, oh Lady Darby. How goes your embroidery? <laughs> Blanche, don't bite Lady Girlington this morning, will you? I don't think she likes it. Oh, sweet monkey, are they feeding you properly? Dear old Judith, that went well, I think. Indeed. The men are in wonderful heart. Not one of them would have accepted those peace terms, not one. They are as staunch now as they were two months ago, and they cheered me to the echo. Yes, Did you hear? Indeed. Yes, madam. Ah, breakfast, perhaps. <laughs> Mistress Parker, where are the young ladies? Ooh, gossiping, I'll be bound. I'll find them, my lady. Lady Darby, I must speak to you. But of course, dear Lady Girlington, why not? You always do. Ever since that unfortunate visit you chose to pay in February. What a season for visits. Just before the traitors first began their iniquitous bombardment. So here you are, stuck. <laughs> And you've been speaking to me ever since. Oh, God. To have left Sir John and little Edward and all to give you my still room recipe. An economical recipe at that. Walnut leaves and marjoram, I seem to remember. And everything marked not too much. All of a little quantity. Exactly. And don't you find it all has a slightly, shall we say, pinched air? Take 1,000 damask roses or more. That's the kind of recipe I like. Still, you were very importunate about bringing it. 
And then it all began. It need not have begun. Sir Thomas Fairfax sent a message asking you, an unprotected woman with no troops to speak of... Three hundred of the Stanley's most loyal men... ...to yield Latham House, and you obstinately refused, saying you had no instructions from the Earl of Derby to do so. Nor had I. Nor were likely to, with the Earl of Derby many miles away on the Isle of Man. And then all your neighbours came and begged you to give in to save the countryside from the soldiers' harassment. And still you refused. <laughs> yes, that was amusing, was it not? Six neighbours of the best rank all set to make me give in. Of course, I explained it was quite out of the question. I must say they were very poor-spirited fellows, all of them. They were frightened for their estates when they came. And they were frightened of me when they left. My husband was amongst them. So he was. Five poor-spirited gentlemen then, and one gentleman brave as a lion. What a pity you didn't go with them. It was Sir John's idea. He thought a fellow woman might persuade you to... to act more like a woman. Dear Sir John Girlington, he really was brave then, wasn't he? Leaving his wife behind to face a siege. Courage of the highest order, to say nothing of the sacrifice of your presence at his side and the loss of the recipes and that sort of thing. Uh, do you have news of your son? Not since that last message. It was wrapped in lead and shot through into the courtyard by a musket. And that was four weeks ago. He was well then. Oh, but oh my God, if I could hear something now. It's driving me distracted. Ah, one's children. Fortune's hostages. I haven't heard of Charles since the beginning of the siege. And somehow having the girls here only seems to make problems. Oh, Kate, I'm so tired this morning. Help me with my ribbons. No wonder, when you tossed and turned all night. You don't need ribbons at breakfast. Oh, please, sweet Kate. I like to look my best, even at breakfast. Oh, very well. But I would have thought that in a siege... Oh, oh, oh Kate, hold me. Now, Mal, last night you kept shouting out that the besiegers were entering our chamber. I do remember waking up and thinking the baby was coming. Whereupon you told me that I must fetch Mistress Parker and she must fetch Mother and Mother must send a message to your William. I don't remember all that. At that moment, another gun went off and you shrieked. <gasps> Like that. A minute later, you turned beside me and were fast asleep. Well, weren't you frightened? Just a little bit. Well, you must be frightened sometimes. Disturbed, anyway. I was much more disturbed by you than 20,000 muskets because you were so much nearer to me. Now we must come along to breakfast. Ah, Mary, Kate, there you are. We've been waiting. I'm sorry, Mother. Good morning, Lady Girlington. Good morning, ladies. Well, how is the night, Mel? You look very bowed down this morning. It's not just the baby. The gunfire kept me from sleep all night. I thought a cannonball would come right into my bedchamber. Oh, rubbish, ridiculous fantasies. It's your condition. The baby makes you have these fancies. Uh, some ale, Mistress Parker. Oh. oh, there it is again. Oh, come, Malachy. The Eagle Tower is safe. Oh, for one thing, they know we lodge here. It's Latham House thereafter, not the lives of women. Oh, Catherine, how was your night? Were you frightened of the cannon? Not at all. When I saw there was no sleep to be had, I simply lit my candle and read a book. A book? Well, that certainly sent you to sleep. What was it? A French romance? All the king's speeches and his answers to the rebels since the opening of the past parliament. Pamphlets, speeches, worse and worse. Kate, of us all, you are the only one who had a sound sleep. Admit it now. On the contrary. I was so engrossed that I forgot all about poor Mal's moanings and read till daylight. Lord, what a pair of daughters I have. Well, let's to breakfast, at least. To table, ladies. Benedicto Benedicamus. If you will forgive me, Lady Darby, I find that after all I do not have an appetite for breakfast. Perhaps we may talk later on these matters. If we must, if we must. 
Blanche, at least, is hungry, I see. <laughs> you must naturally do as you wish, Lady Girlington. Oh, my lady, you spoil her. Now she'll chatter all through your breakfast, driving us all mad, the greedy, heathen animal. Oh, surely poor Blanche has a right to her breakfast. But my lady, she... <laughs> All right. I don't wish to upset you, Judith. Oh, Lady Girlington, if you are really not hungry, would it be possible for you to convey Blanche into the hall? One of the soldiers will tend her. Blanche, don't bite, Lady Girlington. Ah! Oh! Blanche. Mother, I want to talk to you about this pamphlet. Tell me, Kate, what on earth could cold print, read by candlelight, tell us about this dastardly rebellion that the cannonades of the rebels cannot tell us? In short, that men of no breeding and no sense have most wickedly taken up arms against their king. Isn't that rather simple? And more to the point are besieging my lord's house, so that it is our plain duty to defend it. I hardly need a book to tell me that. Uh, bread, Mistress Parker. But they do say they are right, these rebels, Mother. They claim to have taken up arms to defend our liberties. Oh, our liberties, indeed. That's even more insolent. Um, some ale, Mistress Parker. I mean, they <laughs> even claim to be fighting in the name of the King. But the King's Parliament at Oxford is nothing but a sham. Ho, 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 ho. And you believe them, whatever next... Look what your reading's done for you. It's made you a roundhead. The shame of it. Madam, please. I hope I am as loyal as you are. I was only explaining the need to read and reason. Reason? Look out of the window for your reason. But surely we must answer their words with words. Isn't it better to win their minds? Their minds? Better still to put a bullet through their bodies. Oh, mother, I wish you would stop her. She goes on like this all the time. Just talking and, and talking and talking about all those dreadful things. No matter how sick I am and the baby jumping frightened in my stomach, she just gets out another book. Better to hug a book than hold a silly stuffed pillow in your arms and pretend it's a man. Books? Oh, I hate books. I hate books almost as much as I hate bullets and musket fire and this terrible war and the sea. Oh, have you gone mad, both of you? <laughs> now stop it at once, now. Stop howling this instant, else I'll give you something to howl about. Now, Catherine... Would you seriously have me stand on the battlements and shout, The king is the king, and probably be shot for my pains? Oh, it was that tutor brother Charles had, the ugly one, Dr. Rutter. He taught Kate all those things. No wonder, Kate. You were always so bad with your needle, if your head was so full of this sort of nonsense. Oh, what lamentable folly for a daughter of mine. I'd rather have Mal and all her snivelling. Madam, <laughs> listen to me, I beg you. It's because I believe so much here in my heart that I want to believe with my head as well. And you should eat, Lady Catherine. Oh, believe then, believe, believe. But how can I serve the king truly except with the whole of me? I must know what we are fighting for. Really? Whatever would my lord, your father, say? Exactly. Why is my father fighting for the king? There was a great deal of anger between them before the war. I know there was. You and my father retired from the court to the country. It's a jealous world at court. You'll find that out for yourself when this war is over. All the same, now he holds fast for the king in the north. His loyalty went unaltered, Kate. That's just the point. Now remember your own family motto, sans changer. The Stanleys have always been for the king. Or is it for ourselves, madam? For my father's great lands? which have been seized from us, as you so consistently tell us. Enough, Lady Catherine, enough. The Countess is weary. Let her eat in peace. She was out talking to the men this morning before she had broken her fast. Quite right, Parker. Dame mm. Judith, may I not ask why she fights? Why do we all fight? Is it because the King is always right and we must help him? Or is it because we want to help ourselves? I could be so brave if only I knew why. Why are you so brave, Dame Judith? An old woman like you. It's not your quarrel. And they should let you through the lines, I'm sure, for the pity of it. Lady Catherine, the disgrace, the shame to hear you talk Is like this. Is it so this. wrong even to ask questions? As for leaving, I know my duty. And I'll thank you not to talk of me so lightly. I just want to know why... Catherine! Why, why, why? Mm. Oh, Kate, who cares what is the why and what is the why not of it all? I only want to know why everything can't be as it used to be. We used to be so happy here at Latham House. Were we? Well, Christmas, the Mummers, then at the even of New Year, and May Day with its Morris dances and hobby horses and Robin Hood plays. Then the Midsummer Fair, 
with the bonfires blazing from the hilltops and greenery all over the house. How odd. To me it was often so empty. The same every year. But that's what I liked. The dear, sweet sameness. Until Halloween, of course, then everything was different. Oh, why Halloween? Why, that's the night I first saw my William, don't you remember? Oh. I was looking from my chamber into the hall. I was in my ash-coloured satin, with rose-coloured knots and ribbons in my hair. And he was so tall and fine-looking in his scarlet. I remember, because William said... He said... What did he say then, Goose? That my skin was pale like the satin of my dress, and my cheeks were pink like the rose knots upon it. Oh, what fun we used to have How here. How fortunate days. Lord Strafford can't see you now, Mal. Your skin is all blotched with the wind and the sun, and lack of lemon juice or milk to put on it. Are those freckles, I see, or spots? Oh. In any case, your eyes are quite swollen with crying, since you must cry day and night. Only your stomach, I suppose, does your smooth-tongued lord some credit. Mother, there's no shame in loving one's husband. I know my father arranged it because of the properties, but we loved each other as well. Well, of course there's no shame in it. It's just rather tiresome talking about it in public. So much better kept for the bedchamber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, please, Mal, don't start crying. Oh, really? I can hardly rein myself in when I look at the two daughters I've been left with at this critical moment. Kate says she's all for the king, if you please, but that she must understand every action that has ever been done in the councils of the world before she actually says so. And Mal sits sentimentally bemoaning the old days as if she were a milkmaid and not a married lady. Oh, what either of you would do if anything really tested you, I declare I don't know. The mortar. It was the mortar. They brought up the mortar. My lady, come away from that window. Oh, what is it? The mortar. Lady Garrington, are you all right? Oh, Mary has fainted. Madam, Lady Darby, look to your daughter. Oh, give her some valerian. Mistress Parker, can't you fetch some medicine for pity's sake? She's yes. deathly pain. Uh, I must look to the men. Mistress Parker, send a soldier to see if the well is damaged. Yes, Where's lady. Blanche? Someone oh. look to the poor monkey. It must be so frightened. I must go to the battle. Base. Your monkey is unshaken. But we must move Mary, I beseech you, Lady Darby. We must move her from here and all this rubble. We must all move out of the Eagle Tower. Oh, Nonsense. It was the shock. And a powerful shock it was, too, for all of us. The Eagle Tower. The outrageous insolence. But supposing her time has come. Then it has come. But it should not have come. She's only been married these last eight months. Unless young Lord Strafford had more spirit in him than I ever supposed. You don't seem to understand the shock. In any case, I must go to my men. God will dispose. Well, sweet Kate, are you still wondering what we are fighting for? We could perhaps go to the East Turret. We should be cramped, but we should be safe. Out of the question. Look, the flag is still flying. Sans changer, without change. I will maintain. I will not move from the Eagle Tower if they pull it down in pieces around my ears. What would the men think if I, their countess, set that kind of example now? Mistress Parker, fetch my cloak. Yes, my lady. Catherine, she's actually gone. Her callousness passes all bounds. The men do need her. But Mary is still unconscious. Supposing the baby does come, and no matter when she was married. Do you know what to do? I shall do all I can. But off goes my Lady Countess to the battlements, cloak, jewels and all, unruffled to harangue the men. Is that how women should behave? I'll help you with poor Mal. If the baby comes, is it painful? What will happen to her? All women go through it. That is a woman's life. And sometimes her death. I'm sorry. That is a woman's life. Not making speeches to the soldiers. Oh, Lady Catherine, will you help me with your sister now? We must lift her onto the bed. Oh, help me. There. There. Help me. Oh, the pain. Hold my hand, Mary. Quick, hold it. Where is Mrs. Parker? Oh, Kate. Kate, help me. Oh, sweet Jesus, have mercy on me. Lady Catherine, stay with Mary while I fetch Mistress Parker or one of the serving maids from the hall. Yes, I must help. I must do something. Oh, help! Oh, help! Help, we are attacked! An enemy soldier! Sir, give up your sword. I have no sword, madam. Give it 
to me. Give it to me, oh, I say. Lady Catherine, I'm not armed. Well, don't you know me? From Nosley, the armourer's wife. Oh, wait, I'll take off my hat. There. Susan Jeffries. Yes, it's Susan. Susan, what on earth? You're dressed as a soldier. Hi, madam. It was Jeffries thought it best. Jeffries, where is he? Oh, he's gone with the militia, madam. Gone with the impressment. They took him at Michaelmas. And you followed him? What else was I to do? No babes at home, for we buried them last St. Swithin's Day. Both gone together with a fever. Husband John was all I had. But they shouldn't have taken him. Oh, I asked them and prayed them to leave him be. But they took him. So you see, I had to follow him, didn't I? There was no food at home anymore, and the soldiers had roughed up our lodging as well. So you went with the soldiers? You? A woman like that? Yes, madam, I went. <laughs> and good sport it were, too. Did you fight? Ah, I fought like a man. So husband John said anyway. I don't rightly know how a man fights, but it seems I fight like one. In a battle? Oh, ah, there were a battle, all right. And at the end, John says to me, Suki, I'm proud of you. You make a good soldier. Heavens of mercy, weren't you frightened? Frightened? There weren't time to be frightened, madam. And I would never be frightened with my John beside me. He wasn't going to let nothing happen to his Suki, was he, madam? But a woman. Ah, but a very strong madam, like you see. Always have been. Working in the fields and helping John sometimes with the armoury when he was sick. And was it all for the cause, for the love of the king you fought? Ah, well, I, if you say so, madam. Susan, you did know what you were fighting for, didn't you? Didn't make no odds, I thought, just the same. They were Captain Rawsthorne. He's a very nice gentleman and he was always good to us. I dare say he was for the king. <laughs> but I was for John, like I said, madam. I've been a good wife to him and always done what he told me. That's why I come here. Yes, why did you come? It was Sir John Girlington. He were ever so anxious to get a message to his wife. And, and my John, he thought it was easier for me, being a woman like, to slip through the lines in my soldier's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Any trouble, Suki, he says. Just down your britches and show them all you haven't got what rightly should be there. <laughs> oh, begging your pardon, madam. You know how soldiers talk. I see. And was there any trouble? I mean, did you have to... Oh, nay, nay, no trouble, really. Except that red-nosed fella, that long-nosed, round-head colonel. It was him called me up in the camp last night when we were sitting by the fire. Boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Very slender for a boy, aren't you? <laughs> well, sir, I'll be very young. Uh, I doubt if his voice is broken uh, yet. <laughs> well, we'll soon find out. Sing to us then, boy. Yeah, sing, boy. sir? Oh, no, I, I can't sing, sir. Oh, soldiers sing. can sing. There was a young girl, and her name was Sis. <laughs> <laughs> There was a young girl and her name was Sis. That'll do, boy. Be off. I must say, I didn't know we had Amazons in our camp these days. An Amazon? He was quite right. <laughs> Susan, I feel in a way that you were meant to come to me now. That I was. Or any way to Lady Girlington. No, I don't mean it like that. I feel that you're assigned to me. Sometimes when you think and think about the world and you can't make up your mind what's right, then you get a sudden sort of light. Eh, hey, well, I, I don't rightly understand what light you're talking about, my lady. You're the light, Susan. Your courage getting through the lines like that. Oh, that were nothing, my lady. It's shown up all my own doubts for a sort of sham. Mother was quite right. I must act. It's action which is heroic, not endless thinking. Susan, if you can be as brave as that for your John, I must be able to throw myself behind the king. Don't you understand? You're the light which came to me, guiding me, guiding me to go, to go now and act. Which light, my lady? Never mind. Look, now you must go to Lady Girlington with your message, and I must search out some help for my poor sister. Our Lady Girlington, this brave girl who has ventured through the enemy lines has come to bring you news. I'll leave her to you. Lady Girlington... I have a message for you from Sir John. Very private it is. My husband? Aye. Tell it to me. We are private enough here, God knows. Oh, 
beg pardon, Lady Girlington, but I can't tell it to you. Cannot? Well, it, it didn't to give like, just to read. I don't understand. <laughs> there were a dog used to bring in messages in cipher on its back. But one of them dratted soldiers shot it when it was swimming the moat. So now they're using me. A woman where a dog can no longer go. Aye, that's right. It, it, it's on me back, my lady. Let me see. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. It's Nelly, my little boy. Oh, madam. No, don't move, oh. I beseech you. Don't move, I... don't talk. Spare me. They have taken my baby hostage. Hostage for the surrender of Latham House. How could they be so cruel? <laughs> well, ladies, the die is cast then. May God preserve us in our enterprise. Surely there was never more need for courage than at the present time. But to our prayers first. Although we are but women, we can surely pray as well as men shall pray. And God's blessing can fall equally on both sexes, where freedom is at stake. Kate, toll the bell for our prayers. What do you mean? Are we going to surrender? We must surrender. Surrender, Lady Garlington? Never. Have you forgotten who you're talking to? Lady Darby has asked the men to sally forth tonight and capture the enemy's mortar. I can't believe it. Stop the bell! Believe it you must. It's to be done tonight. Unless we capture the mortar, we are all lost. But they're all the other guns. Even the 24-pounders hardly hurt us. But the mortar, you saw how the mortar shook us. You're mad. Without the mortar, we could withstand them for many months with the food that is left in the Marvin well and the secret pipes for water. We shall await the darkness and then a picked body will sally forth with a rope. In the name of our children, for God's sake. I will sake. tow the bell, Kate. Give me the rope. I implore you. Don't you understand? It's for the cause. It's madness, Catherine. Surely you see that. I've seen the truth, Lady Garlington. We must act. Yes, we must act to save ourselves and those we love. This way we shall all be ruined. Never. Courage never brings ruin, only cowardice. You should be more like my mother, as I shall try to be in future. Then God help us all. Let us pray. Oh, God who lookest down on all our enterprises, great and small, and sees into the secret of all men's hearts. Before we begin these, our desperate works this night, on bended knees we give thee all praise and glory as to the God of our salvation, and beseech you for ourselves to aid us. For though we are but weak and helpless women, with thy grace to aid us, our hearts are as the hearts of men. Give us thy blessing on our venture this night, that full of zeal in thy cause, it may be brought to a successful conclusion. And on the heads of our children, the helpless little ones, bring thy blessing too, and help us to protect them. Yes, and on our children, blessings too. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen madam. Oh, oh Mistress Parker, I, I fear my... Pains are beginning in proper earnest oh, now. Lord heavens. <laughs> oh, why does the time pass so slowly? Oh, what time is it, I wonder? It's quite dark. It's hours since they set off. Oh, you were never able to wait, my lady. True. I wish I could have ridden with them at their head. Why is it so quiet? I'm glad the muskets have stopped. Oh, it won't be long now. We shall have a baby before the new day. Oh, poor Lady Mary, she's weakening fast, you know. Weakening? Oh, Lady Mary. Water. There, there. There, there. It's the long labour. Drink, drink, my pretty. Oh, not so long labour, Judith, for her first child. I was a day and a night with my poor Charlotte. Oh, where's Blanche? Oh, I wouldn't have the monkey back, my lady. This is no place for a heathen animal, the laying in of a Christian lady. Poor animal, poor Blanche. 
Is a baby really so much better than a monkey? As for your laying in, I remember it well. You were young and full of energy. Lady Mary is young enough, but she has been much saddened and her spirits daunted by this seed. There is no strength in her to fight. Well, Mary must have some strength in her somewhere. She's my daughter, and she's a Stanley. Oh, Judith, always so gloomy. Listen, can you hear anything? Parker, another pain. Oh, go to her, poor child. There. She's half sleeping between the panes. Lady Mary always so timid. She should have had a daily dose of conserve of marigolds to keep her spirits up. But where are we to find marigolds in all this dust and dirt? <laughs> oh, I believe she has a fever too. I've let her blood twice, but still, she is as hot as this fire. Poor little Mal. Poor silly little Mal. What a time to choose to produce an infant into the world. Lady Mary's labour was brought on too soon by this dreadful combustion, my lady. But she was always like that. Do you remember, years ago, before the trouble started, when she was about eight, dancing the midsummer mask at court with young Lord Herbert in the Queen's train, and came down with the measles an hour before. Well, that was scarcely of her making, my lady. Yes, but the dress was much too small for Kate. She could hardly dance in her place, even if she had known the steps, which she didn't. And the Queen was so cross. A poor little thing to be blamed by the Queen for what was never her fault. <laughs> now I come to think of it, Mary even bellowed most tactlessly at her baptism when the Queen stood godmother to her and we named her Henrietta Maria in her honour. She never showed any sense of timing right from the first. It's true that she isn't even wearing an eagle stone round her neck in a bag yet as a charm against a hard delivery. That's worn only three weeks before time, and we never thought we had got there yet. What did I say? Well, at least I must remember to loose all the knots. That will ward off some of the harm. Oh, and we should have a groaning cake to cut and distribute afterwards. Oh, to whom, Judith? To the rebels? Oh, my lady, don't laugh with me. Not at a time like this. <laughs> Dear Judith. Nothing prepared that's proper. Oh. Dear, nothing ever seems to be rightly done in this dreadful wartime. There's no order any more like there used to be. Oh, I hope Lady Mary's baby will be a boy. This is a wicked world and no place for another little girl like her mother. Quiet. I think I hear something. Listen, Judith. Come to the window. Yes. Ah, they're returning. It's the horses. Oh, Jesus be praised. The gates are opening. Look. Look, can you see? Is it ours or theirs? How can I see in the darkness? I shall go up to them. Who's there? Who is that? Watchman, you, soldier in the turret. Can you see the colours? The mortar! The mortar! You've captured it, my brave boys! Oh, my Lord of Derby will be proud of us now. We shall never surrender. Quick, quick, let me have a rope. Throw me a rope, fellow. I, too, will pull with you. Mistress oh. Parker, what is it? I heard the noise. Have we surrendered? Oh, that was no noise of surrender. That was our new baby. Look oh. at her, a little girl. Born in the middle of the siege. Oh, Mary. Oh, give her to me, Mistress Parker. There you are. I'll hold her. Oh. See to Lady Mary. Where is the Countess? I've gone to speak to the men. Men? At night? They've got it. The mortar. That was the noise. Oh, no, they can't have succeeded. We must surrender. Is it a son? No, Mary. A brave little girl. Oh, a girl. Yes. Another brave little girl like you. I wanted a son for William. Oh, don't be sad. There was never a braver mother than you, Mary. Your first labour here in this siege, all alone, 
No one to hold your hand. Your lord far oh, away. Your mother is the brave one. I- I'm a coward. I cried and shrieked. Oh, women can never be quite as brave as men, can they, Lady Girlington? They are certainly different. Yes. Even now, I'm still frightened. I'm frightened for my baby, too, not only for myself. Where is my mother? Your mother is helping the pulling in of the enemy's great mortar. They've captured it. Oh, that was finely done. What courage. Do you think so, Mary? Sometimes I think that women have so much more to bear than men. What will this poor baby have to bear, I wonder? Will she know the pain of motherhood, the labour? And worse still, the agony which comes later. The agony of a mother separated from her son. Is that... The waiting and not knowing, not worse than anything that men have to bear. Oh, poor girl, she has fainted. Oh, Oh, poor child. How much blood she has lost. Mistress Parker, help me. Yes, 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 yes. The mortar is ours, inside our own gates. All hands pulled. Oh, see my hands now, Alice. My lady, your shoes. Yes, we kicked it as it lay there. We kicked it. No more fire and brimstone to vomit out of your belly, old monster, we shouted. Well, what's next? Yes, sound the great bell. But it's nearly midnight. Who cares what time it is? We shall have Thanksgiving here, now, right in the hall. Everyone shall come. Lady Darby, you have a granddaughter. (laughs) Ha, ha. A bonny new baby, born in the midst of our great siege. Oh, Mal, Mal, my delight, my joy, how clever you are. What could be better than to have your little baby born to us in the midst of all this warfare? A symbol of peace. Oh, Mal, Mal, what shall we name her? Lady Mary cannot hear you, madam. Oh, well, then I shall name her for me and the baby I lost, Charlotte. I shall be her godmother and give her her first coral rattle to keep her from harm. And we'll have a fine christening in a day or two, now that we have some respite from the old monster. How long will this respite last? Forever. We shall be able to hold out forever, with the mortar safely inside our gates, with our great well and our food sorted from winter. We have nothing left to fear. (sighs) Kate. Kate, what's this? You're hurt. I'm wounded in the side. It's not very severe. Wounded? And your clothes? Men's clothes? I went with the men. I went with them on the sally. These are soldiers' clothes. You went? I went to the captain. I told him you wished me to ride with them. I I don't understand. Madam, I had to go. It was for the cause. Our cause. The king's cause. But all your doubts and arguing... That's over. I'm decided. When I saw that poor foolish girl, Geoffrey's wife, in her soldier's clothes, not knowing what she was fighting for, but with that great heart to struggle all through the Battle of Chester, I had to go with the men. You had to? Yes, it was the only way. How can we sit here and not ride and show what we think? Mother, be proud of me. I am proud of you. Of course I'm proud of you. But I still wonder your appearance, for one thing. A woman riding with men in soldiers' clothes in the middle of the night? No one except Captain Fox knew who I was. Dearest Kate, that's exactly what is so strange. No one knew. No one saw you. No one to appreciate your fine courage. In the darkness there, it was really all wasted. Not wasted. I conquered all my doubts and worries, as you said I should, and I served the king. Oh, yes, yes, you have. Well, we have our news too, Kate. Your sister has served us by giving a little baby to be the mascot of our siege. Tonight, both my daughters are heroines. And I have news for you, Mother. Great news. We learned from the country folk that Prince Rupert is on his way. Prince Rupert? The flower of the princes. He will relieve us. It's almost over. Oh, great night of our triumph indeed. When? When? Tell me, Kate, when? Well... That is a little more difficult. Difficult? Mother, Captain Farmer asked me to tell you that there are difficulties. 
First of all, the prince cannot come immediately, that is certain. We must hold out still a week or two while he takes certain strongholds to secure his passage to the north. Oh, a week or two? Well, that's nothing to us. Secondly, my father has pledged some reward to the troops who came with the prince. Oh? The prince has fixed this sum at £3,000. Oh, the ill-mannered German lout! I swear of all the king's nephews, he is the worst. Demanding money to come to the relief of his own royalists? Well, I could scarcely help him to find money here. We have no money. You do have your jewels, Mother. Lord Derby asked that you should pledge your jewels for £3,000. Oh, that is hard. My moon and stars that help me to shine when my noble soul is dark. My jewels. <laughs> this the Queen gave me when I married. The castanet of rubies and diamonds my grandmother, the Princess of Orange, gave me for the new year when I was ten years old. These pearl and ruby buttons were a present from my uncle, Prince Frederick of Nassau. The men like to see them in the morning when I walk before them on the battlements. <laughs> they call this my crescent moon, and I am Diana the Huntress. Oh, well, it can't be helped. Here they are. Take them. Rings, brooches, necklaces, all. I never really cared for most of them, just the crescent moon a little, perhaps. <laughs> Some of them reminded me all too much of my old mother-in-law. In fact, I, I really think I'm quite glad to see them go. One should not be too fond of things in this life. I've often said so. Here, take them away, Kate, before I become like a sentimental old woman. A sentimental old grandmother. And start to cry. Mother, thank you. Ah, how lucky, ladies, that since we are to be besieged for just a few weeks longer, that we have so much to be thankful for. I myself will toll the bell this evening. Mother! Mother, the well! The Marvin well! The pipes have been cut on the southwest hill! The pipes! We are cut off from the spring! Latham House has been betrayed! Was that the sound of the muskets, Parker? Oh, no. I can't even hear the noise of the guns anymore, my... Head aches so much it's made me deaf. Stay still, Lady Mary. It's all quiet this mm. morning. That's the reason. But last night, I didn't hear them last night either. No, last night was peaceful too. Take advantage of it. Try to sleep. Oh, I'm half asleep, dear Parker, all the time. I'm so thirsty. Well, I'll see what I can do. Not your share. Parker, promise. Of course not. We are all to drink our own shares. Otherwise, we may become ill and be a burden. That's what the Countess said. Oh, I know you give me your own share sometimes when the fever is with me. Well, I'm old and it's not difficult. Anyway, some of your own share goes to the baby's wet nurse. Oh, that's only right. It's getting very bad for us now, isn't it, inside Latham House? I know it is. I heard my mother talking last night. She thought I was asleep. Yes, it's true. Things are hard here now. It's hardest of all for the Countess. Your sister and Lady Girdington and the other ladies, they suffer. But you see, they don't have to bear the burden of it all. I see her sometimes, so sad and still... When she's alone, she seems to shrink. She looks almost old. Oh, I just can't think of Mother as old. Just strong. Because she never, ever shows it in front of you all. Even now she has the heart to tease that Lady Girdington and make her little jokes with me. Sometimes I don't know where she finds the spirit. After all, she knows, the best of us all, that things are desperate. Desperate? Lady Mary, 
I don't rightly know whether I should tell you this, except that you seem more lively this morning. It's the men that are bothering the Countess. Because of the water? That and other things. Not all the men have been as cheerful about the water ration as we've tried to be. Uh, yesterday, uh, there was a kind of riot. A riot? Uh, yes. In time, the Countess did calm them, but it cost her dear. She was shaking and trembling when she came back to me. Oh, poor mother. So that's what she was talking to Kate about. I heard them. I was half asleep. Weary, Kate. And yet it's no good being weary in this world, is it? Not in a siege. But the fact is that without water, even the bravest of us cannot fight on forever. I will fight forever, Mother, till the last drop of water. But beyond that, none of us can fight very long, I think. We've got to make another sally. Tonight, while the men have still got the strength and the spirit, we've got to fight the enemy back far enough for the men to get to that other disused well on the West Hill. But, Mother, we've hardly any powder left. The enemy has plenty of powder. You mean... We raid their supplies. Another breakout? Tonight. We broke out twice before, don't forget. And what happened? The enemy was there waiting for us. I know. Carnage. It was appalling. I still don't like to think how they knew. If they knew. But it's our only chance. Mother, supposing there were two Sallies. A real one from the little gate. And a false one from the big gate. Hmm? And we told no one the truth except a small band of men going out from the little gate. Who could betray that? Then we might just stand a chance. Does that mean, Parker, that there will be a Sally then? Oh, I don't think we should talk about it any more, Lady Mary. Your mother wants you to be protected from it all. Look after Mal, she says. Don't bother Mal with it all. Give Mal my water. Mother's water, too. Yes, and I shouldn't have told you that either, I know, but I couldn't bear you to think she wasn't caring for you in spite of her being so busy. My husband, William, would have given me all his water. I know it if he were here. Well, Lord Strafford is not here. No. Worst of all, I'm even beginning to forget him. Yet when the siege began, I thought about him all the time. I longed for him, his face, his body. Nothing else seemed real to me. Oh, that was natural enough, your husband. Yes, but his body, that's what I wanted most of all. Oh, his body indeed. You should think about your duty. Wasn't that my duty then, to think about his body? We were man and wife. That's nothing to do with bodies. That's to do with being married in church, as you were. And well, I remember how pretty you looked. And Lord Strafford, so young and innocent, the pair of you. Oh, but even the marriage service, Parker, talks about bodies. That it does not. One flesh, it says we are to be. May I then think of William's flesh, Parker, like it says? Lady Mary, there is such a thing as thinking too much about your duty. I think body sounds nicer than flesh anyway. It's so quiet without the guns. Hmm. A strange calm this morning. The men can have hardly any strength left. Their water had to be cut again yesterday. And here I sit, so weak and helpless. Oh, poor little Mal. Have some water. Is that my share? A new day, a new share. No, no, I mustn't. Mistress Parker gave me a cup just now. You're a brave girl. A brave girl and a proper woman. Oh, Mary, believe me, this siege will end well. And it will end soon. My William doesn't even know he has a daughter. That 
Perhaps the men will try to get a message to him tonight. Tonight? When they break out. Another Sally? I don't believe it. After two have failed. Oh, this time there's going to be a diversion. Everyone will think they're going to use the big gate. Oh, don't tell anyone. It's supposed to be a secret. I see. Are you sure? I feel so faint again. Of course. Stay still, Mal, and try to sleep. It will all be over soon. I swear it. Then. Um, what are you doing? Sleep, Mary. Oh. That's a good girl. Mm. Lady Gurlington, what are you doing? Stop that. Stop that at once. Give Throw that to me. Give it to me. Oh. You, you were signalling. Yes. So, it was you. Yes, it was me. You don't even deny it then. You vile woman, you no. wicked, you, you... I don't deny it. I'm proud of what I've done. Proud? My God, traitor! Our poor good soldiers, our, our house, our cause, all betrayed. The betrayal of the will. Was that you too? Yes, that was me. But my conscience is not easy on that score. Poor Mary giving her water to the nurse, the helpless baby, the men squabbling over drops of water. But you have done it. You have done it all. As sure as if you tortured them all yourself. No. You see, I thought that even you would surrender if there was no water. I would never have given in how little you know me. Oh, but that's all past now. But how is it done? The water, I mean. You alone could not have managed that piece of treachery. Who told the enemy where the secret pipes were? I bribed the girl. Not Catherine. Not Kate. No. Lady Catherine will die by her mother's side. It was Susan Jeffreys. Jeffreys' wife? But she was on our side. Jeffreys fought for Lord Derby. Susan fought for no side. She fought for her husband, for her home. And so I gave her money. More money than she had ever seen in her life. And for that she betrayed you happily. Like Judas. Like Judas. Those are fine words, but there was nothing fine about your simple Susan, just sensible. You are right, Lady Girlington. It was you who was the Judas. But why did you do it? I wonder if you can guess. Oh, for the rebel cause, I suppose. Oh, it was not for Parliament, not for the King either. It was for my son. For Edward? But he's a baby. He's my baby. Just six years old. And they took him hostage. They sent me a message. Betray Latham House or his life will be held forfeit. Oh, Alice, you poor, weak creature. No, strong, Alice, and I thank God for my strength. But the decision, the agony... Do you think I took one moment to make up my mind? I did it with joy in my heart so that my child could live. With joy? Yes, joy. But all the fearful harm you have done. What harm did I do? What is one royalist stronghold, more or less? You will be well treated when you surrender. Lady Darby and her daughters are not likely to suffer like common criminals. The war will sweep on and pass by Latham House and leave us in peace. And no one will be the worse. What true mother would hesitate when her child's life was at stake? I would not have done it. No. You would not have done it. I have more pride. Pride? What have women to do with pride? Does pride mean nothing to you, then? Nothing, and I thank God for it. It's the pride of women like you that causes all the trouble in the world. Pride is not evil, if it can make us brave like men. We are not like men, and I thank God for that, too. It's women like you, pretending to be men, aping men without the brains of men, 
who are twice as dangerous as men. Have you no courage yourself, then? No courage at all? I have true courage, Lady Darby. The courage to want peace, as proper women do. I tell you that your courage, like your pride, is evil. You're mad. Courage could never be evil. Can't it? Look around you, Lady Darby, and see what mischief you have brought on your own family by your splendid siege and your heroism. Kate, her head full of nonsense and her talk babbling about the cause. A cause for which sooner or later, no doubt, she will manage to die. She would be proud to do so. Exactly. Full of your own poison. Then Mary, with her sunken cheeks and her fever and her sick baby. <laughs> What is it? I've, I've been asleep. A peace, Mal. Mm. Poor Mal. She never had a chance to be with us. I tell you, Mary was twice as brave as you. And her labour, twice as brave as ever you were, strutting about the battlements, and look how you have paid her for it. I suffered for her. Never. Why, I believe you wept more for that pet monkey who died because there was no water for it than for either of your children. For Mary... Mother... What's she saying? Sit down, Mal. Why are you quarrelling? I will tell you what I'm saying, Lady Mary, because you should hear it and remember it. I'm saying that it's women like your mother who are set fair to bring about even more wars and trouble and terrors in this poor world of ours. And women like you, Lady Girlington? It's women like Susan Jeffreys and I, and Mary too when she's grown up, who bring peace because we believe in peace. We want peace so that our homes and our children can flourish and not be sacrificed. Now you have heard her, Mary. I will tell you why we are quarrelling. Because Lady Girlington believes in peace. She has betrayed Latham House. Oh, Martha. It was her signals that betrayed us, Mal. I did it, Mary, to save you and all of us and all our children from being sacrificed to your mother's pride and vanity. Your mother. She hardly deserves the word. All the intimate, loving things which make up the true face of motherhood, all the private but privileged agonies of the mother move her not at all and never have. I see it now. You're obsessed with hatred for me. All these years you've been watching me and hating me and at the same time envying me. I... Envying you? Yes, envying me. And because nothing higher existed for you, nothing nobler than your own still room, you wanted there to be nothing nobler for me. You wanted to drag me down to your own level. A level I'm proud to keep. The level of peaceful, good things. Oh, your dull little life, your recipes, your preserves, your dull husband, your manor house. None of this stopped you envying the Countess of Derby. On the contrary. Those things which you scorn and mock, the recipe book which I tried humbly to share with you, my baby, my home. These are the things which women are right to love and honour because they bring peace to the world. Oh, she does envy you, Mother, she does. Even now, in the siege, she was always so disloyal. Calmly, Mary, you're still weak. I you mustn't upset yourself. I won't be calm yourself. while she's attacking you. Envy her, Mary. I could half admire her, and I did. But how could I envy her, seeing what disturbance she creates around her. Think about it, Mary. Now you have a child of your own. If all women were like us, what happy, contented times they would be. I'm not like that. Don't you dare say I'm like you. You wicked traitor. Mary, leave her. Don't touch her. I can deal with her. You're far too weak. Oh, all women like you. Why, you're hardly a woman at all, are you? You're a Housekeeper, a recipe book, a distillation of economical herbs. What did you care about our cause? I tell you, our cause is just, and we must fight for it to the death if needs be. Ça change is our motto. The cause? What is this fine cause, Lady Darby? I'll tell you now what your cause is. Your pride! Your will, that is what you are fighting to keep supreme. With your money and your fine possessions and your fine clothes, you have fed that will until it bids to devour you. Silence, no, listen, mother. Mary. Listen at last to the truth about your mother. Latham House will not yield only because she has said it will not. 
You have told as much to those men who still cheer you in their weak and parched voices every morning. They are your mirror. The mirror must not crack, must it? The mirror must give back its clear and splendid image. God save our gallant countess, and God have mercy upon our souls. Well, you have met your match. One person you could not bend to your imperious will. I'm going to signal again for my boy's life. I say this fortress will now surrender. And for justice and right, I say it will not. Help! Help! Help the countess! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Stop it. Go on. Help! Grab her, Parker. Help me. She's trying to signal. Uh, Deborah, yes, yes, the love of God, help the countess. Deborah, you hold her tight. Jess, get some rope and a knife. Oh, Run. Yes, my lady. Oh, my lady. What, what are you going to do with me? I haven't fought yet. Tie you up, I suppose. Aren't you sorry for what you did? Sorry? Never. Even if you kill me. We certainly should kill you if you were a man. Then kill me. But since it was for your child, you did it. Oh, cut some pieces of rope, Parker. Uh, yes. Now we'll tie her up. Uh, uh, mother, oh, she deserves uh, to die. You see, Mary, your mother can't bring herself to kill me. And why? Because in her heart of heart, she knows I'm right. I put my child's life first, and I'm a better woman than her for all her great cause. Parker, give me the rope. You're wrong. You betrayed us. You betrayed my mother. You're wrong, you're wrong. If my mother is too merciful to kill you, then I will. Oh, that knife! Oh, oh wicked. Oh. Wicked. Read it! Oh. 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 Christ. Jesus. She's killed her. Lady Mary's killed her. Dear God, my child, is she dead? Mary! It was for you, Mother. She's killed her. She's killed Lady Gurrington. Help her! Help Lady Mary, you fools! Lady Gurrington is dead. Then she needs no help. Help Lady Mary, she's fallen. As for Lady Gurlington, so perish all traitors. My lady... Lady, I think Lady Mary is like to die soon. Oh, what are we all coming to? Drag out Lady Gurlington's body. <laughs> Idiot, she's dead. She won't harm you now. Yes, she did enough did. harm when she was alive. Parker, Parker, go with them. But, but, but Lady Mary... I will watch over my daughter. And Judith, see that Lady Gurlington's corpse is decently treated at least. Even if she was a traitor... Things must be properly done at Latham House. And may God have mercy on her soul and on Lady Mary's too. I've killed her, haven't I? My girl, my girl. Oh, Mary, I didn't know you had so much strength in you. I thought all my strength strength had gone into the baby. But I was brave, wasn't I? You were a heroine, as brave as any man. Now, lie down. That's what she said. When I was in my labor, she said that women have all the courage, really, and mothers all the agony. But the labor was nothing. This was the real bravery, wasn't it? To kill like a man. I hardly know, sweetheart, what courage is any longer. I thought I knew once. I don't anymore. But I know that you have it. Oh, should you say a prayer, my pet? Shall we say one together? I can't remember any prayers which are right. There's the prayer I wrote at the beginning of my household book when I was married. And when for me the bell do toll, sweet Jesus Christ, receive my soul. No, no, that's such a sad prayer. It reminds me of the deaths of infants. Let's say something else. How does one of your fathers go for the night time? 
As the night succeeds the day and the darkness light, so will my death succeed my life and my grave my death. No, that's gloomy too. Why are all prayers so gloomy? I suppose it's because our lives are so sad half the time. And yet, I never used to think that. Talk to me, Mother. I feel so faint. What shall I talk about? Talk about when you were young. How strange I used to be so frightened of you. Frightened of me? But I was your mother. You could hardly have been frightened of me. Oh, you were such a sweet little baby, Mal. Like a plum. <laughs> no, no, an apricot, I think. Because you were all pink with a tender bloom on your plump little face. I was forever hugging and kissing you. How could you have been frightened of me? Oh, you were so magnificent. Our nurse used to beg us not to ruffle your dresses <laughs> and be just curtsy to you. I was always so clumsy. I even tore my new dress on your buttons when I tried to hug you. Oh, my ruby and pearl buttons. All gone now. I was always afraid of displeasing you. Did I worry about pleasing my parents when I was young? I wonder. I know I wanted to do the right thing. Oh, how far away that seems now, Mal. Life was so easy when I was young, so certain. It was so easy to do what was right. And if you did wrong, you knew that too. Even as a little girl in France, I found it easy to do the right thing. It was somehow so very enjoyable to be good and then admired and, and then everyone praised you. I was a very grand little girl, you know, Mal. One of the great heiresses of France. And did I enjoy that too? Oh, yes. Most certainly I did. The little duchess, I was called. Charlotte de la Tremouille. Only daughter of the great Duke of Tremouille. My cousins were kings and archdukes when I was a little girl. But I always behaved well, even as a child. Our little duchess likes to shine, they used to say. And it was true. Was that wrong, Mal, to want to shine? After all, I always behaved myself correctly. I knew what was owing to my position. I loved my husband. Mm. I adored my children. Was that wrong, to love to be so perfect in the eyes of the world? No, of course it wasn't wrong. Oh, but it did seem so clear in those days. What was right. Now everything is difficult. Sometimes I think everything is going to be difficult and uncertain for the rest of time. I'm certain you were right, Mother. You were always right when we were children. I know you are right now. That's why I'm proud to have helped you. Mal, sweetheart, lovebird, Mal, Mal. Fainted, Park. She's so quiet. Oh, my lady. No, she's dead. She lost so much blood. There was no strength in her. Just heart. Oh, man. No. Lady Garrington killed her, as sure as if she had put the knife in herself. They are both dead now. They killed each other. Poor, poor Lady Mary. To die now with the prince so near. The prince? Already? Can that be so? 
the scouts have the news. They say, my lady, that Prince Rupert is approaching very fast. Relief is coming at last. Too late for my sweet child here. How many times have I said to you, Judith, Lady Mary never knew when to do things. She never knew when to curtsy to the king or get measles before the mask or when to have a baby. Not even when to die. Leave me now, Parker. Leave me alone with the body of my child. Men of Latham House, I speak to you on behalf of my glorious mother, Charlotte, Countess of Derby. Help is now on its way, God be praised. For three long months we have borne witness to the royal cause. For the king must win, we know that. The king is right. It is not lawful for subjects to bear arms against their king. A king and a subject are quite separate things and must ever remain so. A king is not above the law. The king is the law. Rex est lex. I have studied and I can tell you that our fight is right. And that... What is Latham House but one small struggle in a great war? One sprig of blossom on a tree rotting in all its other branches. That is my message to you. It is time to leave Latham House. Time to take our arms elsewhere where the struggle still continues. As long as the great fight goes on, we must go on. Why, Mother, I find you sitting here all alone. Were you listening? So, Kate, you are speechifying now. First fighting, then speechifying. I'm trying to help you, madam. Although I fear they don't listen to me as they used to listen to you. They are weary, Kate. Thirsty and utterly exhausted. You should have praised them. I could have roused those men sick as they are, skeletons as they are. Oh, why do we talk of these things? Kate, your sister's dead. <gasps> oh, Mal. Poor Mal. Why should she die, who scarcely knew yet why she lived? Well, I will remember her in all my battles, her name in all my prayers. Are there to be many battles, Kate? Of course, madam. I have sworn it. I shall not cease from striving until we have defeated the false parliament and restored the king to his rightful palace in London. There is so much to do and nothing left to do here. I'm riding off this morning, madam. Was it not enough for you that we held Latham House for the king? Where will you go? Wherever the fight is thickest. Rather a vague direction, perhaps. And Latham House, its fortunes, your father, even all of us. Latham House, gallant stronghold as it may be, is nevertheless merely a sprig of blossom on a tree which has too many rotting branches. Yes, yes, I heard you say that just now to the men. All this talk of freedom and liberty and the cause... Would you not do better to fight for what you can clearly see? Don't try to keep me here, madam. I know where my duty lies. How fortunate you are. To the future. Well, God go with you, Kate, wherever that may be. I am not sure, though, that talk of the future would have held Latham House all these months. Ordinary people want clearer objectives, And I, I shall try to give them to them. Can any objective be as clear as a leader to follow? You can see a leader. So difficult to see the future, I can it? describe it. I'm not sure that most of us would even want to see it, or would like it if we saw it. We, ordinary people, can fight for things like houses and flags, and even the people who lead us if we love them. You call yourself ordinary? It was always you. They fought for you, Mother. That's why I must go. That's what was wrong here. It wasn't wrong. It inspired them, 
helped them to hang on. No, but they loved you. You were their countess. And I've been trying to explain to them that in the future they must fight for the king and for the cause. God in his heaven, what difference did it make for what they fought? As long as they fought. Oh, Mother, you're determined not to see. You will never understand what I am talking about. I understand one thing perfectly well. You... With all your theories, we'll always need people like me to hold your strongholds and talk to your men. Only a few weeks ago, you could not bring yourself to act because you had to understand the basis of it all, or so you said. Now you say you do understand and the basis was wrong, although the right things happened all the same. All I know, Kate, is that during that time the Roundheads could have stormed Latham House and murdered us all for all you would or could have done about it. However, go. Go. And when the King's standard falls to dust for all your theorising, maybe you will need me again. Give me your blessing. God bless you, Catherine. You and your future. Oh, 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 my lady, my lady, the enemy are going. They've gone. Ah. Those villains were scuttling away before dawn. Here's the messenger to tell you about it. Oh, my lady, by six this morning, Colonel Rigby and his troops were as far as Eccleston Moor, five mile away, not knowing which way to turn. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord Darby at Bolton, my lady, he found Captain Bootle, who used to be his servant but joined the siege with the Parliament, and he killed him with his own sword for what he'd done to you, my lady. Rightly done. Aye, and the Prince has taken all their colours. What are these flags? The colours of the enemy, my lady. They're wicked, unlawful flags. The first of the 22 colours which the prince will deliver to you himself. In token, he says, of a very great lady. Oh, so, these are the flags which for three months flew in the wind outside our battlements. Aye. Ah, some bullet holes. I'm glad of that. <laughs> what shall I do with them? Well... I shall hang them in the chapel to remind others who come after me of what once flew outside our walls. Oh, how flat they look with no wind in them. Our own good flag is still flying. I'm glad of that. What is your name, good woman, who has brought me this splendid message from the prince? Susan Jeffries, my lady. Susan Jeffries. <laughs> Susan Jeffries? Why, it was you, her spy, Lady oh, Girlington. Oh, my lady, my lady, oh. don't strike. Strike you? I would not strike you, you contemptible worm, <gasps> nor stab you as my brave daughter killed your mistress. I shan't even run you through with a sword as Lord Darby killed Captain Bootle. No, I shall hang you. Oh, no. Hang you on the battlements you tried to bring low. Judith, fetch the men. Oh, Mercy, my lady, I meant nothing. It wasn't none of my business. I were only the messenger. And so you dared to come back? Why not? Your effrontery is astounding. Did the prince give you more money to come back? Aye, aye, that were it, my lady. It were the money, you see, the money all along. The quarrels of great ladies like Lady Darby and Lady Girlington, God rest her, are now to do with the likes of me. Husband John was always for the Stanleys, and so was I, and still am. Then how could you betray us? Oh, we're so poor, my lady. And he was ever telling me, Suki, we're poor people and we must scrimp and save. That's how I came to bring the message for Lady Girlington. For money, too. Oh, husband John, he said we should soon be rich and live in finery like the rich folk. What Lady Girlington did was very wrong. But were you not sorry for her? With her little boy held hostage? She was weak, but at least she was not a coward. She was not mercenary. Oh. Was that a reason, my lady? Hey, I didn't rightly understand at the time why she wanted me to do it. You see, she never explained to me. The message was written. They knew I couldn't read and they thought it were safer. So I never knew and she never thought to tell me. And you never thought to ask. Oh, it do not do to ask great ladies why they do things, my lady. It do seem puzzling now when I think about it, don't it? I was slipping through the lines one way to give a message here and... Then I was slipping out to give a message there. 
But I declare that I, I didn't think like that at the time. Weren't you frightened? Oh, I, I was worried coming in in case I mightn't get through and then John would have been angry with me. But going out, I thought of John and how pleased he would be with the money, even more than he'd expected. And I went. Twice the bullets fur parted me her, I swear they did. And I saw a soldier with his leg all smashed from the knee down and another with a pike in his belly. But I knew I had to go on. It just don't do for people like me to tell their fears. Poor wretch. Poor mindless wretch. In your own way, you were as brave as any of us. No. I can't find it in my heart to kill you. Go. Go on, get out oh, of my sight. Lady. Don't let me see you here again. Oh, the men are coming. Here you. No. No, Judith, leave her alone. I'm too weary to bother with her. Oh, Milady. What I... is it? Well... It's just... Well, my lady, like I said, the Jeffreys have always served the Stanleys and you won't hold it against John, will you? After all, it wasn't me and it wasn't him, was it? When the troubles are over, when it's all settled with the Parliament back in its place again and things like they used to be, well, will John be able to have his house back? He will serve the Stanleys again, won't he? He wouldn't like to lose his place for a little matter like this. A little matter like treachery. Oh, yes. I suppose he will still be there. Husband John and wife Susan will always be there. And if this war lasts much longer, much richer too. Now get out. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my lady. Like John says, you are a great lady. I knew you'd stand by us. Oh, well. Of all the sneaking insolence, the wicked, shameful strumpet. Oh, why did you let her go? As she said, I am a great lady and she is a low and common woman. I could hardly behave like her, could I, Judith? <sighs> she should at least have been whipped. Lady Darby taking vengeance on an armorous slut, that would never do. Lady Darby must continue to behave well. At least I suppose she must. To tell the truth, Judith, I no longer know... Why I behave well. I just seem to have got into the habit of it. And I can't lose it, I fear. You should have had that treacherous wench tortured. And Lady Girlington, who betrayed us for the life of her little boy, Judith. What should I have done with her? Had her killed, like poor Lady Mary said, for the wicked woman she was. Well, I didn't kill her. I'm not sure even now that I would ever have struck her down. She was brave enough by her own lights, I suppose. The brave one was the one that killed her, I say. There's no shaking you, dear old Judy. How long is it since you've been serving us? Oh, nearly 60 years. I came to the scullery before I was 10. And all that time, have you had no doubts, Judith? No wondering who was right and who was wrong... No wishing, perhaps, that you could rise higher in your life? Doubts, indeed, my lady. It's doubts that lead to all the trouble in the world. That's my honest opinion, if you want to know. All this talking and doubting and, and, and people not knowing their place and talking and fighting. That's what leads to rebellions and such like doubts. I fear you are wrong, Mistress Parker, although I honour you for your loyalty. Oh, it's not doubts. It's certainties that lead to all the troubles in this world. What certainties, my lady? The people who are certain they are right, Parker. Catherine, with her ideas of right and wrong, and her future, as she calls it. Alice Girlington, with her family, for better or for worse, who tried to betray us all. Poor, brave Mary, who killed her for my sake, when she need not have died. Even that wretched Jeffreys woman with her husband, a pitiful crock of gold. Even me, with my speeches I was so proud to learn to make. Uh, at least there's no doubt about you, my lady. You will go down in history books, I dare say. Everyone will remember your speeches and how you saved us all with them. The gallant Countess of Derby, the heroine of Latham House. Oh, my lady, my lady, the prince is here. He's bowing. Oh, my, he's handsome, his lace, 
and what a fine black horse. Look, my lady, he's doffing his hat to your window, and he dips his sword. Come quick. Where is she? Your gallant countess. Take me to her, and must pay my respects to her forthwith. Oh, my lady, he wants to pay his respects. Very handsome of him, considering his troops are to have my jewels as a reward for the rescue. Now he's doffing his hat at your window. The men are not pointing. My great lady, Charlotte, Countess of Derby, the heroine of the siege. Charlotte, Countess of Derby, the heroine of the siege. He's right. You are a heroine. A heroine? No, there were no heroines here, or else we were all heroines. Go and make your curtsy to the Prince, Parker. Things must be rightly done at Latham House. Thank you, my lady. In The Heroine by Antonia Fraser, Charlotte, Countess of Derby, was played by Maxine Audley, Lady Catherine by Patricia Quinn, Lady Mary by Rosalind Shanks, Alice, Lady Girlington by Jane Wenham, Mistress Parker by Gladys Spencer, and Susan Jeffries by Carol Boyd. Other parts were played by Michael Shannon, Michael Deacon, Anthony Smee, and Christopher Bidmead. And the play was produced by Betty Davis. Gladys Spencer is a National Theatre player. 